Welcome to the Homeschool Show for North Carolinians for Home Education. Our goal is to help you homeschool with confidence and joy. I'm your host, Matthew McDill, and we have as our co-host today, Amanda Wares. Hey, Amanda. Yes, hi. Uh, what do we got planned today? All right. So today in Homeschool News, we're giving you more information on the Thrive Conference coming up and announcing another great new field trip. Super excited about that. And then on Homeschool Conversations, we're going to listen to the rest of your interview, Matthew, with Larry Cockrum, a homeschool pioneer, and he's going to tell us more about his story and how NCHE got started. And on Homeschool Helps with Amanda, I am going to answer the question, how can I set up my ADHD child for success? Got some personal experience with that. Can't wait to share. All right, so let's get started with homeschool news. For Thrive, our conference that's coming up in May, the vendors are announced today. Super excited. Um, there's, we have a great lineup of vendors this year. I know you're going to want to check that out. Also, just a reminder, the vendor application is still open. So we have a few spots. It'll be just on um, first come, first serve basis until it fills up completely. So you can go to nche.com slash thrive if you are a vendor and you want to be a part of the Thrive Conference. And graduation, that is such a special part of the conference. Mm -hmm. um, I love the graduation. It is a statewide ceremony. We have graduates from all over that come in. There is a graduate magazine, a special edition where your graduate can be recognized in that. And there's also scholarships. Super important. Um, so check that out as well. There's a whole graduate central part of the website and the graduation is on Saturday, May 25th at the end of the Thrive Conference. Mm -hmm. So definitely you want to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, there is a new field trip that is coming up. And I, I always say this, I'm super excited, but this is a great one as well. It's so good. Um, we are going to the Moorhead Planetarium March 15th in Chapel Hill. It's on the campus of UNC Chapel Hill. Registration is limited, so you don't want to miss out on that. And just a reminder, that the Transportation Museum field trip is also open. Um, that's coming up March the 8th. So, so many opportunities. Um, I see a lot of people out on Facebook and different things asking about, are there field trips available? Mm -hmm. Are there groups that go and do these things? And so we want to share those opportunities with you. Um, go to nche.com slash field trips for all that information. That's right. Those are so exciting. We love providing the opportunity for people uh, to be a part of those. So now as we head into homeschool conversations, I want to wish you happy 40th anniversary to NCHE. Yes. And this is really exciting because one of the things we're doing this year, as I've said before, is interviewing the pioneers. These are the people who started homeschooling uh, before it was considered legal. And so the North yeah. Carolina Supreme Court uh, made a, a decision that it was constitutional to homeschool in North Carolina. And so Larry Cockrum is one of these guys who started homeschooling before that decision. And he tells in this uh, interview how he and his family were sitting on the front row in the North Carolina Supreme Court at uh, that uh, hearing. Uh, it's pretty amazing to hear it. So, and he's also going to share how NCHE got started. So this is a great uh, segment in my conversation with Larry. So let's check that out. When, when you were in the middle of all those threats, why, why did you keep going? What, what was the conviction or the, the feeling that uh, you would even risk those kinds of things for homeschooling? Well, we were deeply convicted that we had that we were responsible for our children. The state was not responsible for our children, and um, we felt that there was no way that we could put our children back into that atmosphere of, of the public school. Um, I don't mean to accuse anybody there. I'm sure everyone was doing the best that they knew to do. We just knew we we couldn't. 
and we we uh, you know began to connect with a few other homeschool families, which was tremendously encouraging to find out there mm-hmm. were some other crazy people in North Carolina who were risking their lives to do homeschooling, and uh, we uh, we also began to educate ourselves politically. We took our children to Raleigh to the legislature several times and uh, visited our le- legislators and had them introduced our children to them and told them what we were doing. Gave them pieces of our children's artwork and, and uh, asked them to do what they could to help us. Mm. The case for this other couple in our county uh, that had been arrested for homeschooling uh, was going through the courts, and then it ended up in the state supreme court. Uh, my family and I were there in the supreme court hearings on the day of all. We were sitting on the front row, a group of judges way up there on at the bench, and uh, and we listened to the oral arguments. And um, I noticed that the judges were listening to the arguments. They were looking at our children. Well, as uh, all of you know now, the uh, state Supreme Court ruled in favor of the homeschoolers, said the law was unconstitutional, Mm -hmm. unconstitutionally restrictive, uh, uh, vague, and that uh, it was to go back to the legislature. Uh, Then the state legislature decided to open up the Department of Public Education. Mm hmm. And uh, we met the man that they'd appointed and went to his office and talked with him there in Raleigh and said, uh, you're going to be allowed to homeschool legally. But uh, you, in order to be a school under our program, you're going to have to admit other students besides uh, those in your family. You'll have to have at least one other student outside your family for you to be considered a legitimate school. We went to uh, some uh, friends and and uh, asked them about joining us. No, that was a crazy mm-hmm. idea for them to take their kids out of public school and put them in home. They wouldn't do that. But uh, right. then there was a couple in our church that said, yes, we'd like for our daughter to, to be educated in your home. So uh, we, we set up a classroom in our home. We set up regular school desks uh, like they had in the public school. Uh, we were told that we would have to have uh, exit signs and fire extinguishers oh and uh, a bell <laughs> to ring for fire, fire for fire alarms, and we would have to have uh, fire drills, and uh, we'd have to have our home inspected by state inspectors, and uh, we we did all of that. We did everything oh we could to comply with the law. And they sent a state inspector, just like they sent to the public school. They looked at everything in our house. They wow. looked in the in the bedrooms, the kitchen, the bathroom, the the closets. Tell me also when or how did NCHE come to begin in the midst of that, and what was your role in that? Well, yeah, well. Uh, we we found these other families in um, especially around Winston Salem and the Triad area, and uh, we have family in Winston Salem, and uh, so we went up and arranged for meetings with them and uh, many conversations, and uh, and decided to do what we could to help other homeschool families, and uh, so we. Uh, we started the uh, started the organization, the uh, the NCHE, and we had someone to draw the graphic for the uh, for the greenhouse with the rose in it. And adopted the name NCHE, and uh, I remember we had our first um, state meeting at uh, our first assembly there in Winston Salem, and, uh, and just invited whoever we knew and. Amazing assembly of people came. We had a book fair, mm. uh, and uh, just began simply that way. It was interesting. Some of the people that wanted to be in uh, homeschooling, there was a wide variety of people. I remember we had at least one family who said that they wanted to homeschool their children because the public schools were too religious. 
they didn't want them to oh. taught anything about religious uh, Christianity. They were atheists, and they wanted to uh, homeschool their children to protect their protect their children from Christian influence in the public schools. <laughs> so, so, what did uh, they think about teaming up with you guys, doing it for the opposite reason? Well, uh, we were all desperate. So yeah. all of us felt that way, uh, and uh, we'd been threatened, and uh, we'd had criminal action brought against us, and uh, we uh, we were we just needed each other so much. Then it, it began to grow just organically. We didn't have mm -hmm. any big organization. We didn't have uh, the all the electronic communications that we had, but uh, word of mouth and. Uh, it went out and people from from mountain towns and uh, from coastal towns and uh, all all over North Carolina uh, came came to our, our homeschool meeting and mm. uh, wanted to form the uh, homeschool association. We felt that it would uh, be it would be some uh, help and encouragement and strengthening and maybe some protection for us if we were. Uh, it was still unclear uh, mm -hmm. what, how everything was going to fall out uh, legally. Since you have an opportunity here to speak to some of our homeschoolers today, what would you say to to encourage them? I, I would like to say to homeschool families, homeschool parents, and especially the mother, if you're the primary teacher of the, of the family, be strong and courageous and uh, and there are many accusations that come against you personally. You're not qualified to do this. You don't have mm -hmm. any right to do this. You're not doing a good job. Uh, I want to say you're you're doing a great heroic job just to be there for your children and to mm -hmm. train your children. I would also like to say be diligent and and uh, and do it every day and and. Uh, do the best you can to uh, train and and lead your children. You have an opportunity to affect the next generation. Uh, so you know you're you're doing a great thing, uh, and I, mm. I just encourage you, if you're a homeschool family, uh, also to be in relationship with other homeschool families and strengthen each other. Very early, we did uh, many cooperative things. I'm a science a scientist. We did laboratories for for all the homeschool kids, and we did field trips together. and uh, uh, And uh, don't allow this accusation about uh, the socialization. You know, the best socialization children can have is with one another and with their parents and their families and uh, other other people who are growing together and training their children. Well, that's great. That's really, really good encouragement. And uh, we want to thank you, um, Larry, for you and that generation that started. We, we, we came along and uh, had lots of freedom and lots of resources and lots of community. And we are able to enjoy that. And we know, and that's one of the reasons that we're having this, this talk in this program is so that, the uh, generations now can realize that a lot of hard work, a lot of conviction, a lot of steadfastness was um, was there for those who had to go through that difficult thing. And so we thank you for that. Well, we also recognize, Matthew, that we have to remain diligent. Uh, mm. uh, they, they, uh, things could change legally. And uh, we ha we have to hold on to our our rights, and we have to continue to fight for the freedom to educate our children. Welcome to Homeschool Helps with Amanda. I'm Amanda Wares, Homeschool Helps Director with NCHE. So today we are talking about a subject that is super common and also um, a personal experience of mine, and that is homeschooling kids with ADHD and how do you set them up for success? Now, I will say, so my oldest daughter that I told you last in the last segment um, 
we started homeschooling her when she was nine. We pulled her out of school to homeschool. My other three children have never been to brick and mortar school. I think we all in our family have some level of ADHD, but the oldest does have diagnosed ADHD. And I feel like looking back, I wish that I had known some of the things I know now to have set her up better for success. Um, so I'm going to just share with you some of the things that I maybe wish I had done or some of the things I think I did right. And hopefully that'll help you because I know so many parents out there are homeschooling kids with ADHD, whether formally diagnosed or not. And it can be a challenge, but there's so many ways that kids with ADHD homeschooling can really help them thrive and um, not struggle like they would in a um, traditional classroom setting. So my first thought on homeschooling a kid with ADHD is structure. Structure is really important for these kids. Something to look forward to something to work within a structure. So I am very much not a structured person. <laughs> so providing structure was really difficult for me, but I think it was really important. So how I did that as a non-structured person, um, I chose a curriculum that was structured, that sort of provided that schedule, that daily checklist, um, which really helped. So my child, my children would then know what to look forward to. They would know, okay, first we do this and then we do this and then we have a break for lunch and then we're going to maybe do one more thing. And um, knowing that, what to expect from day to day really did help my child with ADHD. Also, um, we sort of followed loosely a Charlotte Mason approach. And one of Charlotte Mason's principles is short lessons. And I think the idea of short lessons is also really helpful for kids with ADHD. So they're not having to attend or focus for too long. They can know, okay, we really need to focus on this science lesson, but it's only going to last, you know, a little while. Um, another really important point was providing um, a physical outlet, a physical outlet to get that energy out to, um, it's just so good for the brain. It's so good to help focus all of that. So whether you are jumping on the trampoline and doing math facts at the same time, or you're outside walking, you know, up and down the sidewalk while you're discussing the history from that day, whatever it is, having a physical outlet, super important, short lessons, super important, um, a routine structure, so important. Um, I definitely don't have all the answers. There's a lot of resources out there for um, how to help your ADHD child, but these are a couple of easy kind of simple things that I put in place in our homeschool that really did help. So I really hope that helps today. I hope it encourages you. You can homeschool your child with ADHD successfully and help them thrive. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we love to hear your feedback. So if you have any suggestions, you have feedback, questions, please contact us. You can reach us at the homeschool show at nche.com. Um, as always, please like, share, um, subscribe. We want you to get the word out, share with your friends if you think this is helpful or could give them information that would be encouraging to them, please share it. That's right. And until next week, continue to homeschool with confidence and joy.